हेलो चेक हेलो हेलो चेक हेलो हेलो चेक हेलो enforcement is to be provided to these students so that students can know their difficulties which they are facing in the process of learning and they are to have the some corrective measures so that further such kind of mistakes such kind of such kind of errors are not to be committed for the purpose of ensuring qualitative education educational process and having these paradigm shifts in the educational process we need to employ the latest instructional strategies we need to have some new approaches of teaching and the branch of educational technology which deals with the new approaches of teaching new instructional strategies that branch of educational technology is to be called as instructional technology so we are to understand the meaning of instructional technology what is instructional technology that is the question which lies with us so far instructional technology is concerned as i have said that it is the new field of it is the branch of educational technology educational technology deals with technology of teaching it deals with the network of different new approaches of teaching it deals with the new system of uh, teaching and learning we have to understand the whole structure of teaching learning process instructional technology as a systematic way of designing carrying out evaluating the total process of learning teaching in terms of specific objectives based on research in human learning and education implying a com combination of human and non human resources to bring about more effective instructions if we have the analysis of this definition which has been given by uh, more in in, in the year 1970 so it says that systematic way of designing what is the material what is the subject matter which we are to which we are to present it needs to be systematized it needs to be designed tailoring is very important 
and let the subject matter is to be designed and tailored systematically in tune with the need of the students. That is what instructional technology says that very seriously, intensively and properly in a logical order it is to be systematized, designed and developed in such a manner so that it fits well to the needs of the students and students are to be found comfortable by receiving these instruction, instructional materials. Carrying out instructional process, when the instructional process is running, when the teaching learning process is running, it is to be carried out systematically, logically in small steps by following the specific instructional objectives. We are to take care of the course objectives. We are to take care of the specific objectives. We are to take care of the learning objectives. And finally, we are to ensure that all the objectives have been learned by the students. And that is the desired outcome which we need to have at the end of the teaching learning process by using human and non-human resources, by using hardwares and softwares judiciously. Instructional technology speaks about it. To make the teaching learning process effective, productive, and efficient in nature, so it is essentially needed that we are to go for instructional technology to be put in use. Why do we need it? Because instructional technology is needed to make the teaching learning process effective and qualitative. If really we want to make our teaching learning process scientific in nature, we have to go for it. And teachers need to be given a specific training for it. Instructional technology is based on instructional objectives as it has been explained. For systematic system of instruction, it is needed as it goes with the sequence of now. Now, it is very important kind of point which I can put here that when we talk about instructional technology, it goes in a sequential order. Firstly, we are providing the knowledge. That knowledge is to be comprehended. Comprehension is the second higher stage of learning. And the third higher stage of learning is application and skill of analysis, synthesis and evaluation. In case we want to uh, ensure the three different levels of teaching and learning in the classroom, so this sequence needs to be followed by any of the teacher. We say that knowledge, learning at the knowledge level is the lowest level of learning. Learning at the comprehensional level or understanding level is the second higher level of learning. Application, analysis, synthesis and evaluation, these are going to be covered by the reflective level of learning. We want to have the reflective level of learners. Our learners, our students are to be need to be at the reflective level. In case any of the student is going to learn, is going to complete the course by way, uh, by way of reaching at the level of reflex, uh, reflective level, thinking level, critical thinking level, so that student or that teaching is to be considered the best kind of teaching. But our, unfortunately, we are going to terminate our teaching and learning process at the knowledge level. Hardly we are going to touch even the second higher level which we call comprehensional level. Or, but instructional technology says that no teacher is expected to terminate the teaching at the knowledge level or comprehension level. The teacher is to move to the highest level of teaching and creating highest level of learning among the students. By way of following this sequential order. It provides new approaches of teaching, makes the educational process individualized in nature. Now, we are running with the old system of teaching, old system of old methods of teaching. Maybe a lecture method we are using, maybe some demonstration method we are using, 
maybe of some other kind of uh, method uh, techniques we are using discussion method we are using but these are the old methods which are going to uh, to make the system individualized in nature we are to go with the approaches and approach of teaching instructional strategy is different than that of a method of teaching so in the 21st century so we are to make a move to have a shift from math from for from moving from method to that uh, instructional strategies moving to new approaches of teaching moving to recent approaches of teaching and teachers need a little training for those approaches otherwise these approaches are not possible to be put into practice we may speak about these approaches but approaches are not possible to be put into practice until unless we are having the some kind of training understanding and knowing the applications of those approaches i'll discuss a little about those approaches instructional technology makes the process learner centric learning uh, learning centric in nature NEP 2020 and in other policies and programs it has been stated profoundly that we are to have learning centric or learner centric system it gives opportunity to the students to learn in their own pace now students are to learn at their own pace because every student is having different pace of learning every student is having different amount of grasping power some students are fast in grasping and some are taking more time to grasp the same quantum of knowledge so we are to take care and let students are to learn at their own pace at the individual level for this lecture method will not do for this the group methods will not do for this other methods will not work only the solution is for making the system individualized in nature and having learned at their own pace so we need to adopt some new approaches of teaching and that is those new approaches that network of new approaches of teaching is being provided by our instructional technology instructional technology deals with network of different approaches of new approaches of teaching so far instructional technology is concerned it definitely covers the different functions of the teaching learning process phases of different uh, that uh, different phases of teaching learning process educational process is possible to be made dynamic vibrant effective efficient and productive only and only by making use of instructional technology so instructional technology becomes essential important and very significant in the field of educational system or in the field of teaching and learning in case we want to have qualitative education educational technology instructional technology works on certain assumptions it works on some assumptions assumptions are on which are that uh, educational uh, that instructional technology rests so these assumptions are number 1 it has been put which has been given by john b carroll and bloom and his and their associates they say that nothing is difficult all students can learn all the concepts of the subject normally as a teacher mathematics is difficult physics is difficult this subject is difficult this concept is difficult but instructional technology works on the assumption that whatever lies in the curriculum nothing is difficult 
everything is easy everything is possible to be learned by the students in case systematically logically we are going with the students having some patience each and every student of the class is expected to be to learn each and every point of the course content nothing is difficult that is the assumption which is which has been taken into account and considered very important when we are running with the new approaches of teaching new instructional strategies uh, specified under the scope of instructional technology presentation of course content goes in logical order and small steps to sustain the motivation of the students now another assumption that as and when we are designing the course content as and when we are developing the subject instructional material which is to be learned by the students it is to be put in logical order it is to go with the knowledge it is to go with the understanding it is to go with this uh, applications and skills and teacher is to begin with the knowledge takes the students to the understanding and puts them to the order to, to the level of applications and skills that logical order is to be followed with patience and another very important point is small steps are to be adopted whatever the approach has been specified under instructional technology it goes with these small steps it the whole course content is divided into small steps and students are to learn step wise in un, until unless first step is learned by the students teacher doesn't have the green signal to move to the second step until unless the second step is to be learned by the by all the students teacher doesn't have the green signal to move to the third step so that kind of system has been prescribed under the structure of that instructional technology normally all these things we are not following because of which students are always trouble are uh, always in trouble in the process of learning and students are unable to sustain their motivation and patience in the classroom because they we continuously non stop lecture we are delivering students are unable to make out the points which they are expected to retain it assumes to learn at their own pace that means so far instructional technology is concerned it works on the assumption it as and when we are designing the instructional material and we are uh, creating any kind of model of teaching it is to be assumed that students are to learn at their own pace we are not to put any such kind of thing which makes them to be uncomfortable at the time of learning when they are running with their own pace of learning instruction to be assumed instructions to be assumed to go in accordance with the objectives so far teaching learning process is concerned the process is to run in accordance with the objectives objectives are to be in our hand what is the first objective what is the second third fourth fifth at the end none of the none of the specific learning objective teaching objective instructional objective is to be left out many many of the terms are being used and as a teacher we have to understand sometimes we say instructional objective sometimes we say specific objective sometimes we are telling teaching objective so we have to understand that it doesn't make any difference a specific point is there which is to be transmitted by the teacher and expected to be learned by the students on the part of the student the same point is a learning objective on the part of the teacher it it may be called as instructional objective it may be called as specific objective it may be called as teaching objective and we are to have that clarity in our mind let our instructional system is to run 
objective wise. That's what it has been put. Instructional technology always emphasizes on the assumption of objectives. And then it is assumed that time to time, unit after unit, module after module, objective after objective, some kind of feedback and reinforcement. Now the question is, question is how will you give the feedback? moment we are running with our teaching learning process imparting the instruction in the classroom feedback is only possible feedback is only possible when formative testing we are going to have the problem is that formative testing we are avoiding and if proper scientifically formative testing is not being done formative evaluation is not being put as the mechanism of our teaching learning process we cannot think of providing the desired, required feedback and reinforcement to these students. That's the important point which has been put here. And normally the kind of uh, uh, teaching learning process which we are having in our colleges, in our universities, in our schools, you can see that how much feedback we are providing to these students, how much reinforcement we are providing to these students. And many a time teachers are providing negative reinforcement. Teachers just say it is a mathematics and mathematics is very difficult, you will not understand. And students are getting uh, discouraged. No subject is difficult, no con content is there which is not possible to be learned by the students. If any uh, quantum of content is so difficult, then why we have kept in the curriculum? which is not possible to be learned by these students. But whatever we are keeping in the curriculum, it is assumed that these, the, this content is possible to be learned by these students. And students can learn it, they can understand it. That is why it has been kept in the curriculum. Curriculum is not to have any kind of, any such kind of statement, any such kind of activity, any such kind of uh, uh, component which is not possible to be learned by these students. At the time of designing and developing the curriculum, we have to be cautious. And it is assumed that the content is possible to be learned provided it is being placed, it is being presented, it is being analyzed, it is being synthesized, it is being uh, put in a proper form, in logical order and small, by having small steps. Nothing is difficult. So that feedback time to time and positive reinforcement is a mechanism under the process of instructional technology. Assumption, it is assumed, even otherwise if teacher is not there, students can learn by themselves. In case material, self-learning instructional material has been designed and tailored in tune with the needs of the students, even sometimes teacher is not needed. Without the help of the teacher also they can learn. Teacher is to be there in the classroom as a helper, as an assistant, as a proctor, as a proctor. And students are to be active and students are to be assisted, helped by this proctor, by the teacher or by anyone who is slightly knowledgeable person in the field. Students, the most important point which has been put under the assumptions of instructional technology is it is always assumed that the students are to learn at the mastery level. When learning is there, learning of any subject, any course content, students are expected to learn at the mastery level. And every student of the class is to have that, uh, uh, it needs to attain that level of learning, which we call mastery learning. And it is an optimistic theory of learning, which has been propounded by B.S. Bloom. And it has been tried out. It has been experimented. And it has been found that varieties of stewards happen to be there in the classroom. And when with the patients, the course content has been presented to them, and they were tested continuously and, com continuously and comprehensively by making use of the formative tests. 
finally it has been found the slow learners performed like the fast learners average learners performed like the fast learners finally as a whole every student of the class was to be found at the mastery level and mastery level has been put that 90% course content the students are to learn completely without leaving a fraction of course content complete mastery of the course content that's very important looking into these assumptions looking into these assumptions certain principles have been drawn but these principles have been drawn by looking into these uh, uh, assumptions now here it has been put principle of small steps already has come under that assumption principle of small or uh, 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 not small order it's the principle of logical order principle of objectives principle of individualization feedback and reinforcement all these principles have been put as the principles of instructional technology in case we want to go with the instructional technology so every teacher is to bear in mind these principles now under the scope of this uh, instructional technology the new approaches which have been put approach of teaching is a systematic and scientific generalized plan based on some specific learning objectives adopting logical and small steps to achieve the predetermined objectives there are several scholars and psychologists who worked seriously on approaches of teaching like sydney and pressing 1920s bf skinner 1954 norman a crowder slight mistake is there typing mistake is there so 1955 fred skeller 1963 bloom 1956 they have come out with some new approaches of teaching like program instruction teaching and learning through the designed and developed program bf skinner has come out with this then we are having personalized system of instruction propounded by fred skeller bloom has come out with the new approach of teaching known as bloom's mastery learning strategy systematic approach to instruction modular of instruction computer assisted instruction nowadays people talk about cai but cai will work when we have designed and developed the software for all these approaches first and foremost thing is designing of the material now just one example i'll give and uh, because then i'll wind it up personalized you see personalized system of instruction this is the approach of teaching which was propounded by fred skeller 1963 with his associate it is also popularly called as skeller's plan now see psi structure of psi it has firstly the material which is to be designed for psi it will be having introduction that introduction will work in such a manner and when the students are going to read out this uh, in introduction of the material it will be looking as if the teacher is to be found in front of them and it will try to establish the linkage between the previous knowledge and the present knowledge so introductory part is of your psi material instructional objective what are the specific points which you are to learn your that material will indicate what will be the procedure suggested procedure will be provided there itself you will follow that procedure you will have the suggested content and finally there will be self assessment moment you are satisfied by yourself that you have learned the whole module then formative test will be there this formative test will 
give us the status of your learning and that feedback and reinforcement will be provided corrective measures will be provided and finally we will see finally we will see whether all the objectives have been achieved or not so students are to learn at their own pace they are to go with small steps logical order and one by one almost without the much assistance of a teacher students are going to learn the content at the mastery level by themselves that is the new approach of imparting instruction in the classroom which has been propounded by fred scaler similarly we are having modular approach we are having modular instruction under which again the software material is to be designed by having the rationale of the topic by right if uh, writing the instructional objectives putting the mechanism of test designing some kind of learning activities and following those activities and self test and finally fold test so every instructional strategy every new approach of teaching is having a very scientific procedure of using it in the classroom so that finally at the end in case these new approaches of teaching may be of psi may be of pi may be of cai may be of sai may be of tai even you can design your own approach teachers can have their own approach by taking into the assumptions and this uh, segments of instructional technology it's not what fred scaler has given that is a final is not that what cai has been uh, uh, in cai computer assisted yeah. it, yeah. it is just a order which you are to make as a teacher you can create your own model you can create your own approach of teaching philosophy lies that finally whatever the approach you are to follow in the classroom to deliver the course content let students are to be comfortable in receiving that content let students are to understand that content let students are to make use of that content content in the practice let students are able to have the analysis skill of analysis let students are able to comprehend synthesize summarize in no time let students are to have the capacity of decision making in case student is sound in knowledge sound in understanding sound in applications and decision making i hope that we will be producing we will be producing very dynamic vibrant and efficient learners efficient students who will be able to compete in national international market and meeting the requirements of this 21st century 21st century needs to have a new system of teaching and learning in case we will continue this old system of teaching and learning which is running right now in all the institutions across the country in case we are running with the same system of testing old system of testing so i hope that uh, we will not be able to meet the requirements of the 21% we need paradigm shifts in our process of teaching and learning so this this is the basic philosophy of instructional technology which is definitely expected to be put into practice or having a qualitative system of teaching and learning and producing the dynamic vibrant and efficient learners who will be capable of competing at the global level at the national level at the regional level and will be able to make out their career very successful and happy in future okay thank you if any question please yes.
thank you sakrisi kapoor for your wonderful and enlightened presentation uh experts widely agree that instructional technology provides many benefits to the education process including better access to information more opportunities for collaboration and better capabilities for meeting diverse learner needs this we have seen and heard from today's speaker moving on with the question and answer session participants if anyone wants to ask any questions you can put forward the questions in the chat box am i audible if i put it hello hello yes madam you are audible madam yes if anyone wants to ask any questions you, you can put forward the question in the chat box oh. Oh, let's have a deal. Let me repeat once again. If anyone wants to ask question, uh. Okay, no one has asked the question. Okay, thanks, thanks a lot, thanks to Ria. In a special way, we want to place on record our gratitude and thanks to Dr. Kapoor sir for sharing insights into instructional technology, which was very important, which is very necessary, as rightly highlighted that we need a paradigm shift in the twenty first century. So, thank you all for signing in and thank you all for staying tuned with us. Kindly join us tomorrow. We are sharing with you on WhatsApp as well as in the chat the feedback form. Kindly take a minute to fill it. Thanks a lot and have a nice day. Uh, now may I request Ritu to give word of thanks, Mem Ritu. Hello, am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, since Romer has already thanked everyone, one thing I would like to give my thanks to everyone who is present in the one big national lecture series. I am really grateful. We, really, as a department, we are really grateful for each one of you who have joined. We will meet you. We will meet you tomorrow at this time. Have a nice day. You may all. You you can leave. You may you may leave. You may leave. You may leave the group. Thanks a lot.